Hello Booktube! Today I will be doing the Historathon tag, Ancient Cultures. This tag was created by the Rambling Raconteur, and I saw it originally on Bookends and Books. I'll have links to both videos in the show notes down below. Uh, prompt number one, the Romans. What books, writers, or genres are your bread and circuses? For this question, I went with um, manga. Uh, Japanese comic books. Over the last year and a half, almost mo really two years, because I really got back into manga in late 2020, but I didn't actively start to collect them until mid-2021. Um, and so as an example, I'll just have Naruto by Masashi Kishimoto, one of the most popular manga series of the last uh, 20 years. Um, I've, since I've gotten back into manga, they have, for the most part, uh, been a blast to read. They've entertained me. They've really given me that sort of experience that I think the, really matches the concept of bread and circuses. So, and I just come off, came off of a massive reading of All a Fairy Tale. Um, which was a blast. So, yeah. Uh, question number two, the Sumer or prompt number two, the Sumerians. What is a work you read many years ago but still appreciate? For this, I'm going to stick with the Sumerians. Um, I have read several times um, A History of the Ancient Near East, circa 3000 to um, 323 BC by Mark van der Merup. Um, this is a wonderful um, introduction to the ancient Near East. Um, I read it, I think I read it when I was in college. And then I've read it periodically since then through interlibrary loans. This is a fantastic um, book on the ancient Near East. And was for the longest time one of my... Uh, kind of my the books that I've been after for a while and I was so happy to have it um, when I picked it up a year or so ago it's been longer than a year or so ago it's probably about two years ago given where it is on my shelves uh prompt number three the shang what is your favorite non-example depillary I honestly do not understand what this question really means so I'm going to skip it uh, prompt number four, early basket maker. Name an early work that points the way to later monuments. So for this, I'm going to go with A half Red Sea by Evie Shockley. This is her um, debut uh, collection of poems, although she has a, an earlier chapbook that I may want to see if I can find. But this is an amazing collection that uh, really shows her kind of her, the start of her career and um, her subsequent collections have all been amazing as well. So I'll go with this for my answer here. Uh, prompt number five, the Babylonians. What book did you expect to be impenetrable but found quite easy to sink into? For this, I'm going to go with Insurgent Empire by Priyamvada Gopal. This is a history of um, anti-colonial activity on the part of um, British subjects um, and Britons. Um, and it is an amazing book. I thought when I first read it that it was going to be incredibly dense and academic, but it wasn't. It is a really great book. Just highly, highly enjoyable. Um, okay. Prompt number six. The Persians. How do you organize your bookshelves? So I roughly organize my collection by genre. In the kitchen, um, and before I do a quick sketch of how I organize my books, I will be starting my 2023 library tour um, next week. So you'll see in better detail how I organize my books. But a quick sketch is 
in the kitchen are my cookbooks. And then I have my writing and art books at my desk. There's a little two shelf uh, ca uh, bookcase built into my desk that I use uh, for my writing and art books. And then I have two uh, wall shelves. Uh, one has my general genre fiction and my general nonfiction. And then on the other one is my poetry collection. Uh, below the poetry collection is a set of books, bookcases that has my classics, canonical, modern, and contemporary fiction, not poetry since the poetry's on top, and drama. And then next to it, I have some science fiction, and then on the bookcase facing it, some science fiction. Um, and then I have a headboard bookcase where I have some manga. Um, and then there, and then over here, I have some more manga. And then he, over on this wall is my history wall. And that's roughly how I organize my books. But again, I'll talk a lot more about this in greater detail starting next week when I do my uh, library tour. Prompt, uh, prompt number seven, Shingo Bone of Middle Stone Age Central Africa. How does the length of a work affect your reading excuse me, experience? That depends. Um, when it comes to nonfiction, and relatively recently, um, I've been many, I've been able to uh, read and greatly enjoy a long work of nonfiction. I'm thinking of um, the Napoleonic Wars by Mika Baritze, uh, Maria Teresa by uh, Stolberg Rillinger, um, Age of Decadence by Heffer, a Big Wonderful Thing by Harrigan, all of which are really long works of history or biography, and I've really enjoyed them, and I've had no problems reading through them. Uh, when it comes to longer works of, say, fiction, I do have some issues with that. Um, I remember reading um, The Lord of the Rings uh, years ago and basically running on fumes by the time I got to The Return of the King. Um, and I've also experienced that with some really big um, collections of poetry. Not so much the one on Frank O'Hara or by Frank O'Hara, but um, James Merrill, I've had some issues with that. So I think I'm, I do tend to get exhausted when I get onto like really big works of fiction, but I'll see how that goes because I do have some plans for this coming March of the Mammoths, where I'm pretty much going to be reading only long uh, works. And I will see how that works. Like, um, how I do on those big books. Okay, what's the next one? Prompt number eight, The Huns. How do you read pack books while traveling? So I don't really travel all that often, but when I do uh, pack books for travel, usually I will have either a little attache case, um, that I'll put some books in, or I'll get a like a shopping bag that you can reuse. Um, I have one from the library. Well, I need to find it. I haven't seen it in forever, but I'll pack some books in there. Um, prompt number nine: the Ignatian culture. What are your favorite pop culture references to ancient cultures? Well, I guess I'll go with the Stargate series. Um, Stargate is a science fiction uh, franchise that posits that a millennia ago, an ancient uh, species called the Gwauld, although this is from the TV series, the movie never named the alien species, but they basically came to Earth and started to impersonate or were the foundations of um, Earth's mythological 
gods. Um, and so they basically each um, sort of member of this species has a different sort of ancient aesthetic, mostly Egyptian. So yeah, I mean, of course, there's also all sorts of um, sword and sandal movies um, and that sort of thing. Uh, prompt number 10, the Minoans. Establish trade routes and tag some booktubers. So as I usually do with these tags, I tag everyone. But I guess I don't think Steve Donahue's been specifically tagged yet. So I think I will specifically tag Steve Donahue. Um, but again, if you would love to do this tag, consider yourselves tagged. And hopefully there will be another edition of this tag um, in a few months when the next uh, quarter of Historathon begins. So any booktube, that's all I've got for today. I will be back tomorrow with another tag video, maybe, as well as weekly reads, although I don't know exactly what time I'm going to be doing either one, because I have a plan to finish the book I'm reading today, which will then lead to possibly doing an early weekly read so I can add the book I start tomorrow onto the next week's weekly reads, or I guess I could go and just start it and do weekly reads when I normally do them at, during the evenings and then do the book tag that in the afternoon, or I guess I could switch. I don't know. I'll decide that tomorrow. So a new booktube. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. And again, I'll see you tomorrow. So until then, stay safe. <laughs>